Some examples of Canada's greatest success in technological innovation are also often held up as examples of complacency. Nortel and BlackBerry, two that the economics and innovation prof Mariana Mazzucato uses. She's the author of The Entrepreneurial State, a book that suggests government policy is critical to drive innovation, especially in Canada. I talked to her recently and asked, why her, asked her to make the case for why government is sometimes best at seeding tech businesses. Right. Well, so the point is not sort of government versus private sector. It's the key point of both my book, um, but also of, I think, different types of economists out there who are trying to influence policy, is that what really matters is what kind of public sector and what kind of private sector organizations do you actually need to drive growth, which is smart and innovation-led. And what we see in places like Silicon Valley, but I would argue also places like Germany, Denmark, Finland, um, Brazil, and China in some ways today, is that you have government actually doing much more than just fixing little problems here and there. So the issue is that this is how economists talk about it. Economists talk about the state fixing market failures. Um, and in these different regions of the world, what the state has actually done is uh, shaped and created markets actively that did not exist. So the key example I often bring up is you know, the iPhone, which is often used to show the sort of dynamism of Silicon Valley and you have countries all over the world trying to reproduce their own Silicon Valley. In the UK, they call it Silicon Roundabout. And if you look at Silicon Valley and the iPhone, I mean, every technology behind that phone that makes it smart, so the internet, GPS, touchscreen display, even the Siri voice activated uh, button that you can press, it was all government funded. And with massive risk, I mean, this is why I talk about the entrepreneurial state. Uh, entrepreneurship is not just about setting, uh, setting up a company, it's about taking on risk and real fundamental uncertainty. And investing in the internet before the internet was extremely risky. Investing today in Tesla Motors, which is what Obama did, he gave Tesla a 500 million guaranteed loan, yeah. that's extremely risky. For every Tesla, you have 10 Solyndras. Solyndra got the same amount uh, from Obama and it's often used in, as an example by conservative forces, why the government should do nothing. You know, that's a government failure. And it's just not true. In order to engage with innovation, you actually have to welcome failure. And those countries that have achieved innovation-led growth have actually set up public sector institutions that were both willing to take failure, um, you know, but so, also were able to attract serious expertise and talent into government. So let's, to I, I want to yeah. just drill down into that because one of the concerns people have when it comes to government support of uh, industry sectors, individual companies, is that they, they don't, the so-called picking winners and losers problem, they don't want government being in the business of deciding. How do you get around that problem? Well, first of all, it's just historically false. So as I was saying, I mean, the internet was picked, GPS was picked. Uh, touch screen was picked and Apple itself was picked when it got a 500,000 uh, grant from the publicly funded SBIC program. Compaq and Intel got an SBIR uh, loan, I'm uh, sorry, grant from government. So, you know, this is the point that you don't just spread out uh, support. Of course, you do do that with some things like education. Yeah. You don't pick which students to educate. You want to educate the entire population. But in fact, um, if you're just spreading out support equally, you waste a lot of money. So for example, this obsession that many countries have with small firms, uh, I would argue that that's uh, misinformed. There's only about four to five percent of SME small companies that actually increase productivity, that are innovative, that in fact uh, produce mm -hmm. net job creation over time. And so we should focus our support on those kinds of small companies, right. not just sort of hype up SMEs. So l let's get specific about Canada because you also make some interesting points about uh, when you are a resource dependent nation like ours, uh, that that can actually work against you. Uh, is the case for a thoughtful government policy, state policy around this even more important in a country like this one? Yes, well, I, I, I think there's two points to make about Canada, because Canada is actually not so unique. There's other countries around the world that I've been looking at that are quite similar. And by that, I mean also that it has very low business spending on R&D. Yeah. So this is a, a key issue that Canada really needs to struggle with. And what we know about uh, business spending on R&D is that it's not driven just by things like task, uh, tax cuts but the perception of businesses about where the future opportunities are. And those opportunities are often hugely related to state funding of difficult areas that the private sector is still too risk averse to go to. But another point 
um, is that these missions um, you know, tend to be quite big. It's not just about supporting a particular sector. So in terms of these, you know, this extractive sector that uh, the Canadian, that the Canadian, Canadian economy is sort of biased towards, I think a key thing that government should be doing is thinking, what is a mission for this area? You know, it's not just about throwing money at it. It's actually asking it to do right. big things. Um, instead, what you have is lots of those companies in that particular area hoarding a lot of money, cash, and not actually spending it, refunneling it into the economy in areas like human capital formation, but especially in terms of research and development into new technologies. And so this, the support that the government gives that particular sector should actually be to transform it, to engage business to do difficult things and not to be happy with the status quo. Okay, and we've only got about 20 seconds, but if we have a government, and we do in Canada, that's actually been going the other direction, that's been taking the approach uh, that you've described of backing away and trying to let the private sector solve these problems, how hard is it to get a mind shift inside policy when, when you're going the wrong direction? Well, I, th I think a radical rethink is needed. If they go in that direction, they will at best just become a tax haven to get companies to come here, not for interesting reasons, but right. for pretty boring reasons. If they want to attract the innovative companies, if they want to transform their own sector, um, you know, sectors to be innovative, they really have to uh, get into a new way of thinking about how the public sector and the private sector can engage in a dynamic way, as opposed to just bash away at the public part and think that somehow the market will provide. All right, we've got to leave it there. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Mariana Mazzucato is author of The Entrepreneurial State and also a professor of economics and innovation at Sussex University.